Prenatal genetic testing. Prenatal genetic testing gives information to the expecting mother about certain genetic disorders that the fetus may have. First, let's back up here for a second. As you probably already know if you're watching this video, our genetics is carried within our DNA. This double helix is packaged into chromosomes, and we have got 23 pairs of chromosomes making our genetic makeup. During this genetic testing, we are checking for differences in this karyotype. So first up here, we have an image of a normal pair of chromosomes. Here, we've got an extra chromosome, which is called a trisomy. Next, we have a missing chromosome called a monosomy. And here, as we can see in yellow, there is a change in a gene on the chromosome, referred to as a mutation. Examples of such conditions include sickle cell disease, cystic fibrosis, etc. Now, the main reason why prenatal genetic testing is performed is to test for trisomies. Three main trisomies are tested for. These are Down syndrome, trisomy 21, Edwards syndrome, trisomy 18, and Patau syndrome, trisomy 13. If you would like a more in-depth video about these conditions, leave a comment below saying trisomy. Back to the testing, so there are many different tests. The next few tests coming up test only for Downs, Edwards and Patau syndrome. So first up we've got the first trimester combined screening test. This is performed at 11 to 13 weeks. And it is called the combined test as it combines an ultrasound scan and blood test. During the ultrasound, the nuchal translucency is measured, which refers to the fluid at the back of the baby's neck. This is combined with a blood test, checking beta HCG and PAPE levels, together with the maternal age, to work out the chance of the fetus having one of the trisomies we've mentioned. Then we've got the second trimester screening, performed at 14 to 20 weeks. We have the triple test, which takes a look at alpha fetoprotein, beta HCG, and unconjugated estriol levels, and the quadruple test, which includes alpha fetoprotein, beta HCG, unconjugated estriol, and inhibin A levels. Again, giving us an indication of the chance that the fetus has one of the trisomies. Next up, we've got the anomaly scan, which is performed at 18 to 23 weeks. This is a detailed anatomical survey, which looks at all of the structures and can identify some structural anomalies, which can point towards particular genetic conditions. The last screening test is the NIPT. This refers to non-invasive prenatal testing. I shall be uploading another video on an IPT soon, including a comparison of the sensitivity of all of these tests, so stay tuned. Now, as we said initially, these are all screening tests, meaning they give us an idea of the probability of the baby having a genetic condition. Therefore, once we obtain a result indicating a higher risk, then a diagnostic test must be offered to confirm this diagnosis. And again, I'm going to be uploading a separate video on these diagnostic tests. So if you found this video helpful, be sure to watch the other related videos. Like and subscribe.